Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. The advocates are staying positive on this edition, but aren't we always positive? Some might say. Well, we're making a special point of it, though, in the midst of turbulent times. I'll be kicking things off by turning our attention to the brave new world unfolding before our eyes. Ekene is getting us to try a little kindness, and I feel a song is coming on. Libera says a new Nigeria is possible. If you think it sounds like COVID talking, then you're absolutely right. And Bolahon lands us on the right side of things by reminding us to care for the vulnerable during these trying times. Well, like someone said, always look on the bright side of life. Another song? Maybe not. Maybe so. You might want to sing a loss with us after the break. Creativity in a time of chaos. That's what I'm talking about today. And isn't it amazing that the human spirit kicks into action in response to chaos, challenges, and in some remote cases, even death? The number of people affected by the coronavirus pandemic doubles every three days in many countries. 20% of patients are hospitalized and 5% needs to be admitted in an ICU. The demand for ventilators is sky high. And the number of infected individuals is still projected to outnumber the current worldwide supply of mechanical ventilators. So countries, companies, independent scientists and innovators are exploring ways to rapidly augment our mechanical ventilation capabilities. The global community is hunting for life-saving creative solutions. And the good news is the solutions are emerging. To borrow the words of Lu Chuanying, a senior official at a Shanghai-based global cyberspace governance, in the battle against COVID-19, emerging technologies have stood out by making immense contributions in an unexpected, creative, and amazingly responsive way. In Wales, a new ventilator, a virus-killing snood, and a hands-free door pull are just some of the innovations coming out of there to tackle the COVID-19. In China, several Chinese firms have developed automated technologies for contactless delivery, spraying disinfectants, and performing basic diagnostic functions in order to minimize the risk of cross-infection. And one of them is the AI-enabled fever detection systems. Can you imagine that? In Shenzhen, a company has installed its machines in more than 40 hospitals around the country to help medical staff. Another is deploying drones to transport medical samples and conduct thermal imaging. Advanced AI is being used to help diagnose the disease and accelerate the development of a vaccine. And the biggest one for me is that the Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba says its new artificial intelligence powered diagnosis system can identify coronavirus infections with 96% accuracy. They have helped arrest or contain the spread of the deadly virus. And that's becoming one of the most reliable and trustworthy means of combating COVID-19. Now, with such new technologies, we should make full use of them to find 
and contain the source of infection. Let's come home back here in Nigeria. Who would have thought the mile 12 markets will begin mobile marketing and delivery? But that's happening presently in response to the lockdown arising from the COVID-19. Creativity is on the rise in response to the state of the world and the needs of the world in these uncertain times. When this siege is over and COVID-19 has been battled to the ground, what new things will you have birthed? What should matter now is not only having so much time to play with, but having the clarity needed to birth that dream of yours at a time like this. One thing I know is sure, the world is going to witness an amazing line of new inventions and ideas after this COVID-19. Would yours be there? Would yours be there? Mine is already there. <laughs> Let me commend you for at least drawing our attention and our focus to the positives because you know a lot of people when they sit in front of the TV they feel bogged down by the recycling of bad news, people dying and yes there are lots of deaths. I think when we there look are. back we're not even able to mourn the amount of people who are dying. Some you hear in some countries 860 something in a day. Um, so it's really terrible but the positives are in the midst of that, and I'm glad you took time to chronicle that for us, you know, because I think what stands out for me in the midst of all what you said is the human mind. Because, of course, mouth 12 doesn't compare with some of the stuff you're mentioning going on. <laughs> I you know? mean. But what stands out, you know, but, but still we have that human capacity to think and to be creative. For myself, I find that being able to be still, to sit with my family and to read and to actually reflect, not the usual, you know, go to school, go to work, do homework, eat. Now you can actually think and come up with things that you would not normally have come up with. So I really do feel it's a very positive advocacy for me and that appeals to each individual, not just to say, you know, they're doing it. We can no, each... but I agree, even if um, some of these um, innovations might not um, see the limelight, you, you know, like the ones you mentioned, but I can tell you for sure that there are so many innovative you know, stuff's going on now, even in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, I also wanted to talk about, um, you know, something like this until I saw yours. I said, let me depart so we don't all begin to talk about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because you find out that um, after this, this um, um, COVID-19, um, it's gone, like you said. Some, so some of the jobs that we all rush down to do in the offices would also discover that this idea of having to cross Todd Milan Bridge, clog the bridge, mm -hmm. and every, you know, most of these jobs you've discovered that you can actually do them at home. The employer and should also, be listening to you. No, no, seriously. But it's the I truth. Also, the players have never I, also, the truth. I also know that there are some persons who, before now, were not used to using emails, yes. but now are very good at it because they are forced to do it. No, but the question home. is. So these are innovations. No, we will modify our practices in Nigeria. I think we like to that. We like to see you at your desk where we can supervise you. So. Are we likely to let you work from home? That's yeah, the but problem. that's changing with COVID-19. Uh, because we I've have always to. advocated for, look, you can do three days at work, two days at home. But most employers don't feel well, secure. They don't feel comfortable. They don't but you don't have to micromanage the, the, people. The most, what, what, what matters is results. Targets, yeah. I know some organizations, sorry, quick, quickly. I know some organizations, even before now, I know I have friends that will tell you I, I need to uh, uh, clock in because I'm working from home. Mm. I never, you would. Here in Nigeria? Yes, here in Nigeria, in Lagos, yeah. Okay. You know, I have a neighbor, I have a neighbor who, you know, I used to think, you know, the guy was just a, a layabout until one evening he said, ah. I said, come join us uh, for a drink. He said, no, 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 sir. I'm, I need, I'm, I'm, I'm rushing to clock in now because um, it's almost six. I, I'm resuming at six. I was like, what? It's organized. You, you know, so gradually people would begin to do the stuff that you never thought you know, will happen in Nigeria. You know, there are a few things in some of the existing platforms that we use, but that we're not even using them until this kind of circumstance will force us to start looking at it. I have my O360 in the office. It has something called Teams. It's a collaboration tool. We can sit everywhere and still be working on the same document, the same project, and be updating. We can all watch the same video, we can receive the same presentation. You, never knew, same presentation. you never knew you could do that on People are having I meetings on Zoom. I never had to use it. Yeah. That's the reality. Exactly. People are having, having meetings, meetings on Zoom. Meetings, staff yeah. meeting on Zoom. So a lot of things are already... It's clear already we don't work efficiently enough. But maybe it's because we're not putting... Or we don't work smart enough. Yes, we're not putting first things first. I don't know if we're really interested in delivery here in Nigeria. I think we like the... We like to see the yes, people. Yes, we like yeah, the... But I think this is the time it will have to change. Yeah, and so some of these things are changing now. 
that those idea of wanting to see everybody mm. now you discover that whether you like it or not you won't see anybody but you just need the job done yes exactly. and so people are getting job done yes. right in the comfort of their home for some time i've been working from home until you know the work stops and so it it actually shows that you know this idea of everybody rushing to the office. I, 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 I hope we stay with these. It's, it's, it's really you know, new. I, I could change chronicle. our performance management to orientation. I hope we stay because with now change. people have to now work based on deliverables, exactly. clear yes. deliverables. I think that's the crux of it. That it will change our performance orientation. I mean, I couldn't chronicle everything in some in in Joss, some young people came together and fixed the ventilators people said were working. You, 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 you know, and, 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 they and, fixed and, it. And, and, and quickly, you also find out that there are some some issues that we never really averted our mind to before, but are now that people are doing right in the comfort of their home. Yeah. The world will never be the same. Nigeria also won't be the same. Lagos so. won't be the I same. Hope we continue with that and particularly, so, the mile twelve market was just yeah, mind blowing for me. <laughs> I mean, who would have thought that such a to to market? tomatoes and peppers. No, no, but seriously, if, people, if somebody I mean, had, can if somebody had told you that a time will come where people will cook soup and deliver to you, yes. it won't have been. No. But now, even it before COVID nineteen, yes, it, it was happening. I even heard a lady is cashing out. I know that because a friend to a friend of mine. She's cashing out in the UK now because she's catering for old people. So she, yeah. she's making food for them. They're buying. Oh, so wow. people are still making a lot of money. Yeah. Mm. Right. Like we will keep saying, now is the time for new discoveries. Ekene speaks of the right attitude to go with this brave new world after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Conquests without corresponding values will soon become a transient triumph. I'm going to be talking about how a little respect goes a long way. Especially at this time, we all come across misunderstandings and even outright clashes on a weekly and even daily basis. Especially now when the tension is fast becoming like the air we breathe. Someone I know said after a visit to Nigeria, the problem with Nigerians is that we don't trust or respect each other. Or, by extension, when we show respect, it can be a selective one, reserved for those who help our ministry. Read eye service for that. Respect is that ability to put yourself in the shoes of the person you're interacting with and treat them like you would like to be treated, to consider them before you speak or act. For example, brushing someone aside because you're pressed for time or in a hurry, which is typical, shows a lack of consideration for them with a narrow focus on yourself. We see husbands disrespect wives and vice versa. Neighbors swap disrespect back and forth. People who meet themselves in the streets, in traffic, show utter disrespect in the way they treat their fellow men. We see people trade disrespect and prejudice on social media. Yes, our politicians openly disrespect us, but is that why we should pass the buck? We see colleagues disrespect one another, team leaders lord it over their subordinates as though they were never subject to another. Subordinates act haughtily towards their team leaders, as though one day they don't aspire to be leaders. There is such a thing as soft skills. Yes, soft skills are those qualities we don't get to list on our CV, but are indispensable when it comes to interacting with one another. Make no mistake, despite the current climate of social distancing, we do need soft skills now more than ever to keep us in harmony at this time of global disequilibrium. Just as disrespect is transmitted and can inspire disrespect, so respect and kindness can reverse the trend. I hear a song in my head at this point. <laughs> Try a little kindness, you'll overlook the blindness of narrow-minded people on narrow-minded streets. 
Now, more than ever, a little respect will go a long way indeed. Finally, we got to do the song anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, one, one, one very inspiring song. Um, um, I also, even this morning, I, I was discussing, you know, similar... Libros, you, know, you have to sing that song. I, I was waiting to hear Libros no, singing. No, I've never heard Libros singing. <laughs> oh, you've never heard, don't worry, before the... Before the show is this, over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll remind him. Uh, just remind me, just, just give me the line and I will sing. Just go on, for it. Um, Try. Uh, and and um, if you see a brother walking by the road, yeah, that's the song. That's the same song, right? yes. yeah. You're going the wrong, wrong way. way. Yes, we're singing the same you song. Got to show a little kindness. Uh, yes. So anyway, just yeah. give us your mighty. Mm. Mm. So I told them we're we're <laughs> jogging, and then I saw you know a lady, the little daughter came to hug her, and then I saw one other little girl walking behind the little daughter, and I told my friends, I said, ah, it's just so obvious that this other girl is a house help. You know, I said, I don't know why we always do this. Look at how be beautiful this young little girl is now. Look at the other minder of the little girl. What will girl. stop this woman from treating Taking the two of, of them the same way? Take care of them the same way you make your little girl say, make this other, somebody's child also. You know, it yeah. starts from there. I said, you will give, somebody now said, no, you know, when they come from the village, they are timid. I said, yes. When you now treat them and draw them closer, you give them that self-confidence. Mm, yeah. And then they also will transmit that same confidence, that same respect to others. Before you know it... To even your just, child. Yes, just one by showing respect and, you know, treating, you know, somebody else's child like yours. You never can tell, you know, the effect, the multiplying effect. Yeah. It starts from all of those. You, we go to church, you see somebody going to church, and children will look, or his, his children will look... Wonderfully dressed, but you see the house help behind with oversized shoes, you know, uh, uh, secondhand gown, mm. and uh, the hair is shaved to 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 to. So you know, it's you, just so. the class consciousness that yes. we're taking to the extreme. I mean, my, my Mercedes is better than yours kind mm. of attitude. But let me quickly chip in here: the Omolua, the concept of the Yoruba people of, okay. of Nigeria, which is that you treat people basically what you're saying with respect. Yeah. That you see yourself as a good, as a person of character, and that you, the other person is deserving of respect and acknowledgement, no matter who they are, yeah. which is what you're also saying. Not that you acknowledge their class people or... as human beings, yeah. first of all, and then you acknowledge that no matter how little, there is something unique and special about them, yeah. peculiar about them, that could benefit mankind. Yeah. Even if it means being a house of helping you nurture and take care of your home and your children. It's mm -hmm. a uh, job but, but, but that see, deserves respect. It, yeah. even, even for people who have been able to cross that path, um, when it gets to pressure, when people get under pressure, a lot of them tend to lose that capacity to respect the other person. You see it in queues. No, 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 when no, Nigerians no. are lined up to... No, uh, um, but now, yes, I, as I mentioned, the traffic now, situation. Now, yes. I, I understand that sometimes, like Fela said, this uprising will bring out the beast. Is, yeah, that is a, but, that is but a reality. But if, if we all you know, learn to respect the other person. You won't even get to that uprising. Yes, it will become a culture. Like, especially at this time where the world is almost at a standstill. Yeah. There are some people who can afford to stock their house. And like I was telling somebody, ah, I said, forget I about... Mm -hmm. I said, forget about wealth now. Those cars, 10, 5, 1, 2, they are parked now. Nobody's, mm -hmm. driving. Nobody's yeah. driving them. We are all equal. But there are some people... Who, I like that. We're all equal. <laughs> yes. It's a leveler. There are, there are some people who you ordinarily would expect would have money. Some of them now, because it caught them on a way, there's nothing. They, can, they can't fly, fly abroad. Exactly. You know, so there are some who do not have. By showing, extending a hand of, you know, oh, look, oh, brother, I have this. Can we sit down and share? Yeah. You, you are indirectly also showing, a teaching that kindness. person, yes. that person, some form of kindness. Yes. There are some also, before now, there are people who ordinarily will see you, my Mercedes is better than yours, to use mm -hmm. your language. And now, by showing them that, look, I have 504, but now we are all equal. <laughs> Can we share this small <laughs> bread and drink that? No, I mean, actually, you that's, have taught them amazing. something. That's, that's, that's I, the right That's story. what I wanted to say, you know, the language I wanted to use was, the way people are talking about coronavirus being infectious, actually, respect is infectious. Yeah. You know, there's a way it someone is. will talk to you and look you in the eye like a human being. It just and it changes your spirit. everything. Yeah, I was in the queue waiting to do stock up, you know, when we heard the speech. And someone in front of me turned around and smiled. He's a white man. I said, uh, we're almost there. And he smiled at me. And I felt a that camaraderie was... with him. I felt that we're all in the same boat. 
we've been queuing for 30 minutes just to enter a shop and buy a few things. You know, so that, that okay, ability to reach across. Can, can I quickly jump in now and say something about the power situation, the electricity situation in mm. Nigeria right now? You talked about even if our politicians disrespect us, mm -hmm. should we disrespect? Mm -hmm. I think our government is disrespecting us at this, at Too this much. time. Uh -huh. Because really, at the oh, end of the day, you now. shouldn't just... <laughs> no, 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 no. He was thinking positive because, thoughts. Because, no, we, we <laughs> just need to chip this in. Mm -hmm. that yes. this, we need a bit of respect also from the government. You've asked us to stay indoors, stay home, and be safe. But if you're not going to give us power, you might as well have told us that, look, we're going to be rationing. You get three hours in the morning. I mean, talk to us like human beings, yeah. like respectable citizens. Mm -hmm. I, I Put yourself in our shoes. Yes. See, I don't even want we'll to. Ration but she's saying she we'll cooks food that had. is spoiling because yes. there's no light. Yes. Three hours in the morning, want, three hours I wanted to quickly, you know, you know, give a personal experience. That is that part of respect? Too? It's part of respect. Yes, it, is. It, is. it is. It is. Respect. It, makes you, it gives you dignity yeah, yes. as a human it, being. It shows in that the you, university, you, you think about me. Yes. yes. In the university, you know, I, in the library, the, the body written on the table. You move, you lose your seat. Okay. No, but for some of us who feels, look, you know, as a big boy, whether you are there or not, just the leave your books there. there. The seat should be there. And so I came, I left my books, I went to the class, came back, and then I saw this guy. He's my friend today, now, Ambrose, seated on the seat. You know, I needed to show him that, look, that you were I'm a big boy. boy. I'm a big boy. <laughs> and, he, he and you don't do that. So I expected him to confront me, and I said, look, didn't you see my books here. I expected him to tell me, but read the inscription there, you move, you lose. He just said, sorry, and he left. Do you know I couldn't sit on that seat? <laughs> I was like, it deflated he took all the me. Big boy out the, of the, the ego, you know, the anger, went everything went out of the window. down and was reading. I went to beg him to go take back the seat. You because I right. couldn't sit on it. You see? You know, so that taught me something. That is, you know, sometimes, you know, that I will kill, I will do this. Mm. One simple I'm, I'm respect. You can deflate all of that. Wow, yeah, that was a good, I like the way you ended on that. Well, respect means that we listen to the opinions of others, and this is where we listen to you. On the last edition, Tim simply says, nice video, keep it up. Well, thanks Tim, with your encouragement, we will. On let the real governors please stand up, Oladele Dosumu says, easier said than done. See what's happening to Shori. I agree with you, but Nigeria and Nigerians are a tough nut to crack. Our mindsets and mentality is the challenge holding us back. The question is, how do we get through to people to let them know that they are more powerful than they think they are, if we act collectively to help each other? Oladile, we don't have all the answers, but certainly now is a good time to speak out and stand up for what is right. Okay, next, the next comment on the matter of Abueros at Uyo Airport. One viewer has a personal account to give. My brother. These people for you almost embarrassed me just at the point of walking in for screening. They said, see that woman by the left, which I thought was another searching point. Just for her to say, pay 1,500 for me to stamp your ticket. Thank God the hire taxi I used during my stay in Uyo was still on standby and the driver said he was waiting for me to take off before leaving. So I had to call him to give me cash. Then I transferred the cash to his account. At that point, to show appreciation, I parted with 2,000 Naira. This video, uh, this video, I will spread it as far as I can, as it was an embarrassing experience. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much for that feedback. And do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocates NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocates. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. As they say, good news travels fast, perhaps even faster than bad news. Isn't that right, Libras? Yeah, you got that right, Akene. I have some good news of my own after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you.
Good tides make men merry, while challenges put them together. The challenges of COVID-19 can bind us together in freedom, peace, and unity. COVID-19, a better Nigeria is possible. I'll take this opportunity to thank all our public health workforce, healthcare workers, port health authorities, and other essential staffs on the front line of the response for their dedication and commitment. You are true heroes. That was President Muhammadu Buhari in his nationwide address delivered on the 29th of March 2020 at 7 p.m. Why is I thank the President for being able to thank our public and private health workforce who are in the front line of the response in our fight against the global pandemic COVID-19? I dare say that this is not the time to just say thank you with, without nothing more. Our government should do much more than thank you for our health service workers who are daily attending to COVID-19 patients. For a start, they should be handed a free life insurance policies. The allowances and salaries should be reviewed upward. It is shameful that we are still paying them 5,000 Naira hazard allowance, when 5,000 Naira can hardly solve any ha, not to talk of hazard, in the present day Nigeria. With the current global reality, even the big hospitals in those foreign countries where our leaders run to for headache, don't have space for them, as they too are battling with their own situation. What if the general hospitals they neglected long, long ago had neglected Abakari, Atiku Abakar's son, Erufai and others now that they needed it most? The stone rejected by the builders, you say. Need I remind us that 55 million Nigerians had no access to clean water, even as we are told to wash our hands. And whilst we sit at home, more than 65% of Nigerians live in slums, face me, I face you, and places you can hardly call home. About 87 million Nigerians live on daily hustle to survive as they barely feed from heart to mouth. Our teaching hospitals are mere consulting clinics, while the intensive care units do not even have required facilities to give care, not to talk of the intensive one. According to a World Health Organization report, Nigeria have five hospital bed space, both public and private, for every 10,000 Nigerians. No wonder we are the poverty capital of the world. With the 110 modern hospital bed donated by GTB to the Lagos State Government, it is obvious that we can achieve these things if we set our mind and have a sincerity of purpose towards it. We need not wait until there's a global health crisis before we start looking inward. Our time starts now. Let our religious leaders who are building mansions and 10, 20, 30 kilometers churches auditorium with tithes and offering from poor and vulnerable ones, without a 10 meter hospital bed to contribute to the crisis, they must be aware now that why is prayer can aid focus its actual works that breed results. I weep when I compare the stadium-like edifice we call churches to the best of our hospitals. Try comparing the ICPC and the EFCC headquarters with our national hospital. Shame will catch you. Against these realities, China built an hospital in 10 days to fight the virus. We built a 110 modern hospital bed in five days, thanks to Lagos State Government and GTB, which is a testament to the can-do spirit of the ordinary Nigeria. So if we are sincere and genuinely looking world, we no go carry last. I would therefore advocate that while we are looking for donors and partners to help contribute in our fight against the pandemic, the time to look in world and use this opportunity to revamp not just our health, educational and research institution sector is now, but our complete infrastructural deficit also, we should look at them now. But while we are that, remember that why COVID-19 has killed about 45,000 people globally, Boko Haram, terrorism, insurgency, militancy, and kidnapping have killed more than 20 million people in Nigeria alone since the past 18 years. So if we tell them today all that we have been telling them, they will listen more now. As that which is currently chasing all of us, you know they respect anybody. Quite interesting. Yeah, very well said. C can I quickly just say four things that I picked for? One is data management, our religious leaders, and this quest to have universities and, you know, Auditor yeah. um, auditorium that are almost like stadiums, yeah. and the fact that it took some of them, they, some of them had delayed response to the needs of the nation, and the fact that the private sector can really contribute a lot to infrastructure development in Nigeria. You made a very valid point. Our our worship leaders. I don't want to to narrow it down to churches alone because we also have the other religion yeah. as well. If only they can look at the health sector also and do something there. What's the point in all of us going to the church? Now we know what really matters is the yeah. health workers. This morning I remembered Minister Ngige, 
who said our, our so doctors could go to wherever. wherever. We have more than enough. I've been wondering where he is because he's not been talking since <laughs> COVID <laughs> hit the world. So he should tell us now. Where do we begin to now go they are get in our, Yes. Abroad, they're asking doctors all over the world to come. Come, it's like come over to Macedonia to help us. Mm -hmm. So where is Minister Ngege? He should come back and say what he said the other yeah. time. No, I mean, you're right. I mean, again, sorry, we're going to say And finally, else. now we, yeah, I've said who, who, the people who matter really at the end of the day, the private sector, isn't it amazing the kind of donations we're having these days? So what happened to us before COVID-19? No, the COVID-19 has no respect for anybody. That, but Healthcare yeah. is a system mm -hmm. and a very extensive one for that matter. And when we're addressing it, it has to come from a central planning perspective. What we are doing today is what I call knee-jerk reactions. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. function very well. But I'm just hoping that by the time this is over, somebody will suddenly realize that I may actually be trapped in my own country and I can't get out. Yeah. <laughs> and it is that same facility that I didn't pay attention to that may help it's me out now. in the future. It's so happening. can we think in a systemic manner and address the problem as it is? You see, our priorities are reflected in the things we do. Mm -hmm. if, if we knew that we would ever get to use our own hospitals, they would be better than they are I, right I guess now. by we, you're talking about our leaders. Our leaders, yeah. <laughs> OK, let's, our leaders. sorry, have you landed your point? It will be much better than have what you, Have you landed your point? OK, okay let's, I'm let's, not let's sure go. You, but mm. Yeah, the form over substance, that's what kept coming to my mind, you know, because even when you did your advocacy and we're saying, OK, you know, why are people not turning their attention to things that will actually drive proper change? It's because we're preoccupied. And that, for me, is an extension of what you see in the religious uh, body. Yeah. They, they like to give an appearance of righteousness. Meanwhile, there's no real heart to do good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I know someone, I normally would be, I mean, I'm a Christian, but I, I can't defend anybody now who doesn't see the need to do good and does it, and rather you're, you're busy focusing on the form. Then you're exposing yourself. So I think COVID-19 is exposing a lot of our hypocrisies at this time. Because someone I know who is, you know, an ardent follower of um, one of the churches, one of the big churches, says, look, I love my pastor to death with her words. But Today, I see, you know, the people where we worship, a lot of them are very destitute, where we have our, our churches. They're very destitute. But instead, when I was on the online worship, they're asking for tithes. And she's saying that she's very unhappy. She's <laughs> going to call him and re reprimand him and say, haven't you noticed that a lot of your parishioners don't even have, because they live hand to mouth? Shouldn't we now be saying how they will come and we can put food for them to come and get food? Why are you asking? So it's inappropriate. And if she could see, of course... He should have known even that. He shouldn't be waiting on, for her to is. say that. Come on to obey social I mean, distancing. And, and, and so even the same thing for our leaders. You know you've been living there amongst people who are dying every day. And you don't care until you're trapped with them. Yeah. So there's something seriously wrong with the hearts. You, you, really you know the I'm point I made? The, the point I made recently was that even our Lord, for those of us who are Christians, mm ministered comfort to people. Yes. He went about healing, which yes, is why I'm our doctors good. are important, yeah. and food. He yeah. gave food. Yeah. In Nigeria today, almost every street has a church. I'm yet to see the streets, at least not on my street, not on the people not I know, on my street, where no. these churches are we'll provided disinfectants and yeah. sa sanitizers no, and provided down. food. It's they part are collecting of online tights. Whereas I've heard of, I've heard of, of experts. I've heard of experts who are coming together, and yes. these are people who are not even Nigerians, yeah. and they're donating their things yeah. to help the Destitute. Definitely. Because it's, it's an instinct. Yeah. If you really want to do good, it's an instinct. You shouldn't be happy so, to sit so by for me, and see yeah. people suffer. I, I think some churches are doing it. Yeah, they must, they have yeah. started. Yeah. I mean, yes. I heard of some. I'm not just, I'm not just churches. Even what, what, even I saying, what I am there saying must be is, some churches that are doing what I'm saying is, look, a better Nigeria is possible. It yes. is. It is not only the government, all of us, yes. all of us. And as we're speaking now, there are people in the bush that are fighting to keep Nigeria safe. Correct. And those people also, we need to also look at them. them. And as we speak, here's the big headquarters, the head office, the head, ch head church can donate four cars. Yes. But they have branches. And the essence of those branches was to reach out to those yes, smaller the grassroots, units, yes. the grassroots. And so there's need for those branches to also. Be you know the people that yeah. you've been collecting yeah. offering from. This is the time to also reach out to yeah, them. No, no, you and said it. say, you know what? Let's collect from the center and distribute. And give out to these yeah. poor people 
that have not in fact some of them I even learned that some that are distributing they will look at oh do you have tight card before you get for something real? and I'm telling you and it's so sad it, it's, it, it's that's what I'm saying that this COVID will expose a lot of people yes. yes. because if you're genuine you'll do the right thing if you're not then all these other forms will, will and it's not it's not even just about the fact that they are members of your church yeah reaching out to yeah, people love your neighbors should, yourself exactly <laughs> but, but, but let me you know. quickly chip in something as we round up on this one is mm. that it's commendable that churches have built universities yeah. it's, it's another uh, uh, discussion that some of these universities are not affordable for yeah. ordinary people yeah. but this covid 19 is telling us that just as universities are important it's Healthcare. about time yeah. we yeah. looked at hospitals yeah. also yeah you know does that clash with the miracle concept which one? No. It does expose our miracle concept. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just no, putting no, it out there. I want to for another day. It has exposed our miracle no, no, no. concept now. Even them principles. And because I've never seen anybody shouting, come and receive your COVID Your COVID healing. Uh, uh, healing. Yeah. So, yeah. Some people are selling COVID. No, there's some, there's some pastors who are also ministering. I've never seen anybody lay hand and then you yeah. Yeah. Even, yeah. even some of them. If they say somebody has COVID now, I've never seen a pastor say, okay, I will put hand on you. They, they run away from it. Okay. Anyway, that's another day, like I <laughs> told you, I said, that's a topic for another day. After the break, Bolahan shares his thoughts, lockdown, and the poor. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it, 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 I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. This may well be a time to reconsider the saying, he that wears the shoes knows where it pinches. Making lockdown easier on the poor. Some thoughts. Nigeria is way behind in citizens' database. Thus, the lockdown palliatives implemented in other parts of the world may be tough to cut and paste in our environment. For instance, there are less than 40 million BVN linked accounts. And inside of those 40 million are all our HNIs, the mass affluent and the middle class, who don't need free food kind of support. Most of the people who do, don't even have bank accounts. However, in Lagos, we know where the poor lives and can get relief packages containing food items, soap, sanitary towel, basic drugs, etc., to their doorsteps a few days into the lockdown. There are clear neighborhoods in Lagos where we know 90% of the people who live there will need support during the lockdown. Ijorabadia, some parts of Bariga and Oworo, some parts of Ajegunle and Makoko, etc. We should deliver relief boxes at their doorsteps. In the same vein, most of the people who live in Face Me, I Face You homes are part of the lower rung of the ladder and will require this support. Let there be packages for them too. In the more affluent environment, it is obvious that those guys living in the uncompleted and abandoned buildings will need support. By the look of a building, you can determine if the people living there will need help. Reach out to them. Trade associations know their members and can reach them. For example, NURTW leadership in a park know their members in that park, work with them. There could be a provision for the elderly to come to neighborhood school premises where they can pick their packages. I learned Lagos State is doing something along this line using the Lastra database. But like all other databases, what percentage of Lagosians have done Lastra registration? We must think about that. Churches and mosques have a better knowledge and profile information of their membership. And quite a number of them have been involved in regular welfare reach outs for these members. 
This can also be a veritable channel for distribution of packages to needy members. We also need to have arrangements to be able to get people to hospitals should the need arise. We seem to have forgotten that before COVID, people do fall ill and may need urgent medical attention. But what happens if there is no transportation? Governments must fill this void by making ambulances available at each local government area and providing the citizens with the numbers to reach them for emergencies. How about the beggars and the homeless at this time? We know where they live too, and we can reach them there. We must avoid the kind of distribution we saw online in Lagos some days ago. The crowds were so uncontrolled that they may as well have been dancing in a petri dish of COVID-19. Any approach we adopt must keep eyes on infection control while reaching out to the needy. There are too many people who cannot feed if they don't earn in a day, and they don't have enough to stock up for two weeks. The lockdown must consider them. Yeah, I, I, so. I completely agree with you. And um, I was discussing a similar you know, thing with um, a journalist friend. And I said, look, why is it that we like this cut and paste approach to issues? The uh, big words are, big countries are locking down. We also are cutting and pasting without also understanding the peculiarity of our of circumstances. Our Lagos state government wanted to lock down, but they, I listened to the Lagos state governor and the commissioner for health, and their reason was that they didn't want to lock the economy also because hunger might even be more serious than COVID-19. COVID and so what they were doing was, you know, advisory and then ensure that, you know, some areas are on lockdown. But then the president just came, like military fiat, blah, 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 Lagos lockdown, Abuja lockdown. Ogun Anna, state lockdown. Ogun state lockdown. And for me, the, another thing is that we just fold our hands, we're folding our hands, waiting for the, vi the vaccine to come from the West. Is it a crime that we should also go into the lab and begin to look for the vaccine to the... Is it a crime that, oh, the solution to this problem came from Africa? There was a Professor Iwo solution. You know, so... Uh, we're which not, was that. ignored. We're not even looking at all of this. We are so fixated on the West, waiting for them, why copying everything that they did. Yet, we don't have the same infrastructure. So it beats my imagination. I listened to uh, Ame, uh, Ada, uh, Ada, Ada Ame complaining. You stock your home, and the very next day, there's no light. Wow. Yeah. Your generator cannot power your uh, freezer. Yeah, freezer. So at the end of the day, all the stock, you have to cook all of them in one day. You know, so what's the essence? Mm. Government should look at this issue. I, that's why, for me, on running up on this, I had expected that the governors who understand the terrain and the people better should have been left to manage you know, their states, the affairs, yeah. you know, according to the peculiarity of the state I mean, and I'm not, not the center not wanting the to lockdown. state manage. I, I'm not against the lockdown simply because I feel that if you've seen that it's worked, then let's not even make it a case of them versus us. If you've seen that it's worked, then it's, it works. But my own issue is the palliatives. I don't think we've thought through the palliatives. I don't think so. So if we think, like now you're saying, face me, I face you. I went to buy water in a face me, I face you enclosure. And I thought to myself, sending these people home to stay here, is tantamount to it's murder. <laughs> because they, I saw someone wearing face masks. I said, there's no running water in this environment. Mm -hmm. You're all on top of so yourselves. What is this face mask actually going to do? You're, you're condemning them. They're Eight better of them off. living one Imagine, room. so if one person there's catches no all of them, them, IDPs, all these people, they're really in a very dangerous place. So I just they think use one latrine. It's, it's a case of sit, sit down. You, you get the eggheads to sit down and say, okay, how do we deal with this? Because this is our existing situation. How do we make these people safer? than they are. How do we make sure, we, even if we have to dig a borehole right now, make sure there's running water here, make sure there's, you know, they don't have to, because like you're saying, if people are starving to death, you, what life are you saving? So you know, I'm not is, against the lockdown because I think it's been proven to have worked and we needed to stop it. The figures are going up in Lagos particularly. We needed to just say, look, everybody just stay in one place. Up everywhere. Uh, but staying in one place is now becoming, becoming more dangerous. Yeah, okay. I am not saying don't you know, lock down. Sorry, mm. quickly, I'm not saying don't lock down. Mm. But the people that are closer would understand the peculiarity of how to Lagos about was it. locked down mm. even before the, the military official lockdown. lockdown. Yeah. You know, it was locked down, but there were some areas, some businesses that were operating skeletally. Mm. And so to avoid that hunger and that crisis, that epidemic, mm. you know, of having, or every, imagine in a face me, I face you no of 18 rooms, all of them sharing one latrine. 
and all of them are at see. home. And then they give you messages like clean, social clean after you. <laughs> and uh, wash your hands. How does that work? There's no water. Like, and there is no water. There is no water. Anyway, if Nigeria doesn't change uh, with this COVID-19, I don't think it will ever change. No, it will change. <laughs> um, first off, uh, responding to Bolahan's um, advocacy, it shows us more than ever before the need for data management, the results of our census of time past, and the fact that we need to apply this thing. Some of the food uh, packages distributed were distributed on party lines. I saw it yes. coming. Yeah. I saw it coming. Yes, yes. But we know where the poor live. So that even is now, we're still, still doing this partisan thing. We're still doing the same partisan. thing. You, ah, we must yes. stop this partisan, the party people at the grassroots. That's that why we I told you. Churches would distribute to only their members, and it's, members are purely tight. No, it's no, terrible. we must rise above this. We must begin to look at how many people are in a local government. This mm. is a time for local governments to have meaning yes, and we need relevance. To local government right? Yes. If we're distributing based on local government allocations, which is the biggest local government in, in Lagos, mm -hmm. for instance, Alimosho, Ali the smallest, Mosho. they can't get the same thing. The world level, how many people are in these different worlds? We need to return to the census. What is the role the of the I local must, government chairman quickly, and the councillors? Yes. That remind me, I must quickly matter. give kudos to my own councillor. Please give. Let's hear he, some good news. He has, you know, what he did was, you know, he reached out to the, you know, people who could fairly do well in, in the local government. And then he's been able to put food Some together, food together. Oh. and distribute to Fantastic. the poor. Fantastic. That, that's a breath and, of fresh air. You know, he's been consistently that's a breath doing of that. Pressure. You, you know, call his so name take, out. take from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, call, uh, <laughs> that would be a campaign. <laughs> no, I don't mind. No, 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 if someone is doing it's something, it's not a party good. thing. Yes. I think it's okay to Because for me, a country is only as strong and as stable as its weakest. No, no, my. So if the vulnerable people are not being taken care of. Truly, my counselor in Ajero, me, Feludo, is doing is doing that exceedingly well. He's all that people should hear. Koshofer majority leader and um, he's, you know, he's been doing, doing that. Absolutely refreshing to hear that. We, yeah. we must do more and we must now begin to pay particular attention. You talked about Lastra. We still must come back to data management. How do we manage our people? How do we provide the basic infrastructure? Our politicians, do your, your, your constituency, is there water there? Is there water? Do you know the number of people you have? If you're going to make an intervention, how do you make an intervention? Mm. Without, without, like data. Data. Data, without yeah. data. It's, it's all about data. Um, we are the voice of the voiceless. As you join your voice to ours, the message is amplified. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa.com slash the advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time, same channel. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Let's stay safe. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.